So anyway, the Holy Ghost is God in the earth today, and we walk with him by saying words and some of the words that you should be saying, knowing that he's God in the earth today, and he's in the earth today, should be the use of the words, I worship you, Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost, your God in the earth today. Holy Ghost, your God in the earth today. The Holy Ghost is God in the earth today, and you walk with him by saying words. We're bringing you another message about the Holy Ghost. He is a divine person that you can meet, you can know him, you can walk with him. If this message speaks to you and resonates with you, then tell someone, evangelize, share this message. The way you can do that is to share, to like, make comments, and subscribe. All of those actions help to promote this message. If this message helped you, then most likely it'll help someone else too. We appreciate every single one of you so let's pray right now holy ghost i thank you for these people that have tuned in online i ask you to reach out and touch them visit them open their ears awaken them to the reality that you are god in the earth today and reveal to them how to walk with you as god in the earth today we thank you for it in jesus name amen now i was reminded today to not always preach from such a high level I assume and most of us do we assume that everybody knows what we're talking about most of the time here especially with the things that I'm sharing the things that I'm preaching on a lot of people have no idea what I'm talking about and there are things that I will have to say over and over and over again because some people simply won't get it they don't get it the first time I didn't get it the first time they won't get it the second time they won't get it the third time so we have to keep saying these things over and over again when I say things like Holy Ghost worship these are new words to some people they don't really know what I'm saying I don't mean the music portion of the service I mean actually worshiping God the Holy Ghost using the words I worship you Holy Ghost I use the term Holy Ghost worship and I mean something by that when I, and I say God in the earth today and I mean something by that a lot of people like God in the earth today they don't, they don't know what I'm talking about walking with him God in the earth today by saying words I mean that just goes over the head of so many people yet these are the fundamental things of our creed of what makes a Holy Ghost worshiper a Holy Ghost worshiper I say it every single time when I come on here the Holy Ghost is God in the earth today and you walk with him by saying words that might seem like a simple statement but it, it it encapsulates so much anyway so I'm going to explain a lot of these things I'm gonna break them down so that people won't be completely lost you need to know how we got here what do you mean here here is worshiping the Holy Ghost in his dispensation that's where here is you understand we're in the earth today he's in the earth today we're with him we're walking with him in the earth how did we get here you need to know how you got here so clear that we can describe it simply to other people so clear about where we are in the earth today and who we're walking with and how we do it that there's no debris on our path there's nothing tripping us up so oh well, maybe that's not right no we're so solid in it that we can freely know the Holy Ghost and we can freely worship him it is the dispensation of the Holy Ghost and there's so many religious things religious voices trying to say you can't do this you can't do that but if you can clear that path of all that debris you can clearly walk with the Holy Ghost who's God in the earth today how do we get here short answer Jesus got us here everything he said everything he did brought us to this place of being in the earth with the Holy Ghost as God remember he said he'd send another John chapter 14 verse 16 and I will pray the Father this is Jesus talking red letters and he shall give you another comforter well if you're gonna have another of something you must have had one in the first place you don't have another cookie without having the first cookie well here Jesus was the original comforter and then he's gonna send on another well Jesus was a person who lived with them and walked with them and talked with them so he's gonna send on another person who lives with them and talks with them that would be the Holy Ghost let's read on here another comforter that he may abide that he 
you see that that he may abide with you forever so we know he's a he we know he's a person we know he's a divine person we know he's God verse 17 even the spirit of truth do you suppose this happened did Jesus do this did Jesus fulfill it yeah he went away and he sent an another let's quickly look at that go to Acts chapter 1 let's look at verse 8 but you shall receive power after who the Holy Ghost has come upon you you receive the power after he comes on you and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and Judea and in Samaria and under the uttermost parts of the earth and when he had spoken these things while they beheld they were looking at him they were looking at Jesus he said these things and while they were looking at him he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight they're all witnesses to this that Jesus was there talking to them and then he started to go up into a cloud and was taken out of their sight Jesus was with them Jesus no more where did he go he went up into heaven obviously and while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up behold two men stood by them in white apparel which also said you men of Galilee why stand ye gazing up into heaven this same Jesus say this same Jesus we're not talking about a different Jesus here we're talking about the same Jesus this same Jesus which was taken up from you into heaven shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go has this happened it has not happened Jesus has not yet returned right so where is Jesus this same Jesus he's still there the Bible says many times he's seated at the right hand of the Father now Jesus said when he goes to the Father he's going to send the another the another who is a he who is the Holy Ghost well did he do that or was he lying no he did do that let's go over to Acts chapter 2 Acts chapter 2 and when the day of Pentecost was fully come they were all with one accord in one place and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire and it sat upon each of them and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance this is the instance of the Holy Ghost coming into the earth and he's never left this is the beginning of the Holy Ghost dispensation this is the fulfillment of what Jesus said when he's sitting at the right hand of the Father they are gonna send another another what another person to be with people to walk with people to talk with people to do miracles with people to live with people are you here so did he send him well of course yeah he sent the Holy Ghost the another the person the Holy Ghost yes he did he did send him he's the another comforter and so here we are how did we get here and where are we well we're still in the dispensation of the Holy Ghost Jesus hasn't returned yet you just said that Jesus hasn't returned so we're still in that time frame the dispensation where the Holy Ghost is in the earth and while well, you're in the earth too so we're both in the earth we're with the Holy Ghost now we have our creed as a Holy Ghost worshiper the Holy Ghost is God in the earth today are you seeing this now can you see how we got here I didn't make it up the Holy Ghost is God in the earth today and we walk with him by saying words I'm gonna get farther into that but let's just look at this creed a little bit now all over the world people are hearing this message some of them many of them for the first time that the Holy Ghost is God in the earth today I'm telling you you know this too a lot of people are being on ha ha I never heard that before I've had people tell me they've never heard it before I've had people look at me that should know these things like I'm some kind of heretic when all I'm doing is preaching the gospel I'm preaching what Jesus said all over the world people are hearing this message for the first time many of them and in a few years from now you may look back and think that it's a common thing for people to be talking about the Holy Ghost as God in the earth today and walking him with him by saying words you think it's a common thing but remember this day because it's not common right now 
it's very uncommon so you can be in with the Holy Ghost and what he's doing remember this time so our creed the Holy Ghost is God in the earth today and you walk with him by saying words it becomes a belief system a system of belief our faith is in this system of belief this belief system that the Holy Ghost is God and I can walk with him in the earth by saying words I hope you're getting this I know some of you are so I'm trying to get you up to speed here I'm trying to bring you into this in, a, in a, such a solid way you can't be shaken from it so you can know and be full and free as a Holy Ghost worshiper and worshiping him because in most circles you say you worship the Holy Ghost and they're like oh oh this is some kind of weird strange doctrine no it's not so if we look at the first part of our Creed the Holy Ghost is God in the earth today the first part of that is the Holy Ghost is God now as a Holy Ghost worshiper I'm a Holy Ghost worshiper say I'm a Holy Ghost worshiper once you know and believe and understand thoroughly from the scriptures that the Holy Ghost is God it's such a small step to worshiping him you see but most of the church has has believed the lie that the Holy Ghost is not God he's not a person he's some kind of a power he's an anointing he's all these things but a person God they're tripped up on it so they can't worship him but as soon as you come to the belief that the Holy Ghost is God is a divine person that we've covered in many other videos once you know he is God then it's a very small step to worship him because the Bible over and over says we're supposed to worship God well if he is God then I should worship him according to the scriptures are you here the Holy Ghost said to me quite a while back now he said if they knew me as God they would worship me if you knew the Holy Ghost as God you would worship him would you not if he's God wouldn't you worship him you should you should worship God in fact revelations 19 if you want to turn there you can revelation 19 verse 10 and I fell at his feet to worship him this was an angel talking to John and John the Apostle John who should know a lot and did know a lot fell at this angel's feet and was going to worship him this happened all throughout the Bible people seeing an angel because they're so supernatural and they come from the presence of God we're, we're mistaken sometimes oh that's God here even John was it happens over and over in the Bible now if John was somehow mistaken about an angel who came from the presence of God and was about ready to worship him how much more should you actually worship God the Holy Ghost who is God let's read on here I fell at his feet to worship him and he said unto me see thou do it not I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus what does he say the next two words worship God there it is in your Bible you should worship God is it there black and white yeah it says worship God well if you've answered the question whether the Holy Ghost is God you should be able to clear out all that debris people saying you can't worship the Holy Ghost no I've come to the revelation in the position that I know the Holy Ghost is God I worship the Holy Ghost are you seeing this how we got here you need to know even the Apostles Creed I've covered this in other videos the Apostles Creed which was what the, you know the the early church fathers they put this together they in that Apostles Creed said that the Holy Ghost is equal God he's equal with the Father equal with the Son and is to be worshiped when we know that he is God it's a very small step to step over and go I worship you Holy Ghost you understand because I'm not worshiping some power I'm not worshiping some anointing I'm not worshiping some gift I'm worshiping the Living God who is actually in the earth today once we have that resolved and settled that he is God he's a divine person are you here and then once we have it settled that he is actually the one in the earth Jesus isn't in the earth the father's not in the earth Jesus is at the father's right hand once we have that resolved that he the Holy Ghost is God he's a person and he's in the earth 
look where we're getting now in our creed the Holy Ghost is God in the earth today what day this dispensation that we're in the dispensation of the Holy Ghost if that's true I'm in the earth today this is the dispensation of the Holy Ghost I should learn how to walk with the Holy Ghost I should find out how I can live my life and walk with the Holy Ghost well number one we saw there we should worship God right Holy Ghost I worship you when you do that you're treating him the way he should be treated and I'm telling you most people don't treat him that way so here we go what separates a Holy Ghost worshiper from everybody else what's the separating factor that you can say about the Holy Ghost worshiper that separates him from everybody else he worships the Holy Ghost a Holy Ghost worshiper worships the Holy Ghost now if you were to just tune into this 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 video right now and that's all you heard and you didn't hear how we got here then you might be tripped up by it because you're thinking all of this other stuff but we brought you up to this place where the Holy Ghost is God in the earth and a Holy Ghost worshiper worships God according to the scriptures so what differentiates a Holy Ghost worshiper from everybody else say from everybody else is that the Holy Ghost worshiper worships the Holy Ghost you might think oh that's too simple it's not it there's a lot more to it it's just like our creed here it's there's a lot more to it that that encompasses a belief system that separates you from everybody else try it go up and talk to your Christian friends and say hey I worship the Holy Ghost most of them they're gonna go what so they worship the Holy Ghost say I worship the Holy Ghost those words differentiate you from just about everybody else like it or not no I, I I recommend that you like it so the Holy Ghost worshipers have come to know the Holy Ghost as God as God in the earth he's the living God can you understand that say I've come to know the Holy Ghost as God in the earth isn't this good what separates these people is they worship the Holy Ghost they also use words that aren't found anywhere else those words are only found on the lips of a Holy Ghost worshiper mmm I worship you Holy Ghost use those words I worship you Holy Ghost five words what it does is it separate I'll talk about that in a little bit but it obviously separates you from everybody else because they don't use those words they're sacred words not found in other places they're sacred words not found and not used in other places you can tell where people are by what they say you can locate them by what comes out of their mouth in fact in any subculture in any any denomination which would be a subculture of Christianity you understand you can listen to people by what they say how they phrase things and you can pinpoint where they're from you can almost tell what church they're from just by listening to them just by the things they say the way they phrase things because with that subculture comes a specific set of words a specific set of language that, that frankly separates them from the other people but when you speak the language of whatever subculture that you're in then that makes you part of that group the Tower of Babel when God came down and he he separated everybody what did he separate them with language when you're filled with the Holy Ghost begin to speak with other tongues you know that separates you right separates you from a lot of denominations who don't like it using a specific set of words separates you and makes you part you belong to that group say I belong to that group when I use that language it's no different like when you began speaking in other tongues it put you in the group of Pentecostal people charismatic people people that believe in the gifts of the Holy Ghost when you use the words I worship you Holy Ghost it separates you and makes you part of the Holy Ghost worshiping community the Holy Ghost Society people that worship the Holy Ghost 
if you use the words i worship you holy ghost which means you're worshiping the holy ghost you are now one of those people that worship the holy ghost i don't think that needed to be that difficult anyway our language either separates us or unites us unites us we're united in the fact that we use the words i worship you holy ghost a lot of people don't those were in fact those words are not found i have not found those words in any other group there may be an, an occasional something someone says it accidentally and then oop stops himself but no one's intentionally using those words and i'll get into why this is so important other than distinguishing us as people who worship the holy ghost you think he likes it he's god you think he likes worship you think he favors people that worship him oh yeah he comes and does things for you he'll do things for the word listen listen he'll do things for the worshiper that he won't do for anyone else we're using words that no one else is is this true who is the holy ghost worshiper is using words that no one else is it distinguishes us it separates us it actually rewires you when you use the words i worship you holy ghost it begins to rewire you fully into this dispensation of the holy ghost now remember jesus said the last would be first and the first would be last right who was the last to be introduced we had the father and then we had jesus and then we had the father and jesus sending the holy ghost so on the day of pentecost it was literally the last person of the god had to be introduced the last shall be first in our dispensation we we've, we've we've put the holy ghost last when he should he was introduced last but now he should be first in this dispensation the holy ghost is first in this dispensation the holy ghost is first boy people won't like that will they oh it's just lovely i get to say a lot of things that people don't like so anyway the holy ghost is god in the earth today and we walk with him by saying words and some of the words that you should be saying knowing that he's god in the earth today and he's in the earth today should be the worship of god should be the use of the words i worship you holy ghost and though using those words put you into this tribe put you into this society that's different and distinct from everybody else because they don't use those words those words are completely foreign to them are you here second corinthians chapter 3 verse 17 now the lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty who is this say the lord is now the lord is that spirit when is now according to this when this was written in the dispensation of the holy ghost you understand so now it would be the same time that we're in now we can say the same thing now the lord is meaning the lord the number one is the spirit and where the spirit of the lord is there's no qualifiers in there it really says the spirit lord or the spirit is lord you understand where the spirit is lord there is liberty we're walking with the holy ghost he's god in the earth today with no qualifiers he's not secondarily god he's not some other god let me just read these off you can look at them later if you want second timothy 3 16 says that all scripture is inspired by god god who god the holy ghost all scripture written and inspired by god the holy ghost first timothy 4 1 says the spirit speaks expressly he's speaking to the church hear what the spirit is saying to the churches first corinthians 12 11 says all these talking about all the things that are happening in the earth all these are work worketh that one and self same spirit dividing severally as he wills he's a he he has a will he's the one in the earth he's god and all of these things are being worked by him he's the number one in this dispensation you should worship him we do holy ghost worshipers are separate and distinct because they worship the holy ghost 
Acts chapter 13 verse 2 as they ministered to the Lord as they ministered to the we just said now the Lord is that spirit as they ministered to the Lord and fasted somebody said something in 1st Timothy 4 1 it said the Spirit speaks expressly as they ministered to the Lord and fasted the Holy Ghost said separate me Barnabas and Saul the Holy Ghost said me are you here say the Holy Ghost said me oh he doesn't talk about himself here he's talking about himself the Holy Ghost said me not only did Jesus personify the Holy Ghost by calling him him over and over and over again here the Holy Ghost in Acts chapter 13 verse 2 said separate me the Holy Ghost calls himself that you suppose he was confused no the Holy Ghost is not confused he is a person he's a divine person he's God and look what's going on here's my point he's the one guiding leading directing and empowering the church talking about the Holy Ghost separate me Barnabas and Saul for the work whereunto I have called them who called them who called Barnabas and Saul according to your Bible the Holy Ghost called them who's anointing them the Holy Ghost just like the Holy Ghost anointed Jesus the Spirit of the Lord is upon me the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me he separate me Barnabas and Saul for the work whereunto I have called them and when they had fasted and prayed they laid their hands on them and sent them away verse 4 so they being sent forth by who the Holy Ghost here we have the Holy Ghost being God in the earth today separating people talking about himself leading people speaking to them are you here and I hope you understand our creed dictates for the Holy Ghost worshiper that the Holy Ghost is God he's in the earth today and we get to walk with him by saying words and some of the first words you should say that distinguish you from other people are the words I worship you Holy Ghost okay Holy Ghost worshiper don't forget to like share comment and subscribe you're helping us get this message out you're helping us to get it to other people who need to hear it so until next time the Holy Ghost is God in the earth today and you walk with him by saying words Holy Ghost your God